good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to AVX Live. I'm Joe Gilderson, President of Corporate Audio Visual Services. And once again, I'm joined by my co-host, Mr. Ryan Fitch. Hello, hello. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, welcome back. It is Wednesday. It is one o'clock. I'm going to get to that in just a second. I am not ready for that part yet. Ryan. <laughs> I'm not ready. Sorry, I'm so, just over eager today. Go ahead. And why are you so happy today, Ryan? Because my team won last night, and I'm very amped up. 2-2, two, two, going back to Carolina. Let's go, Rangers. All right. This is good. This is good. And my team will play tonight, but today's guest does not reflect the Celtics hat and the green spirit from last week. So Indeed. we're going to keep moving forward. It's okay. It's okay. But uh, last week, we, we actually learned a ton. We spoke with Tim Foley of the Building and Realty Institute. And since I'm having my roof done right now, I actually learned a lot of information that I could apply to my current scenario Indeed. when I had water dripping down. You don't usually want that. <laughs> we don't want that. So either way, um, you know, Ryan, why don't you let people know how they can find us and then we'll get started. Okay, very good. Well, you can find us on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on YouTube, and we do that live every Wednesday, 1 p.m. And if you're there and you're watching and you're doing so live, you might as well drop us a comment, be part of the show, we'll get your questions answered live. And, uh, you know, yeah, show some love too. Share, comment, like, subscribe, all the above, super helpful. Smash the subscribe button, if you will. Uh, and that is very much appreciated. Of course, if you miss the show, you have the recordings on those channels, and you also have the bite-sized chunks that our very own Alexa Lilos has been doing for us, and that is on Instagram and on Facebook. So you really can't miss it. You can't, you can't miss us. At this point, you just be selfish. Come on. Wow. That yeah. was pretty good. So you're saying we're on the gram? Uh, we are indeed on the gram. Uh, we are doing that Wednesdays, 1 p.m. Thank you, Marissa. Uh, but just, again, little bite-sized pieces. That's all. Okay. Very good. Very good. All right. Well, enough messing around with you. Okay. I mean, I know you're feeling super sassy today. I am. So. I am sassy today. <laughs> so I'm not messing with you right now. Look, let's get started. Let me tell you a little bit about today's guest, Deborah Malone. Deborah has been the president of the Hudson Valley Gateway Chamber of Commerce for the last 12 years and has served in numerous community volunteer capacities and has been recognized by local, county, and state governments for her community service, including the New York State Senate's Women of Distinction and the New York State Power 100 for four consecutive years. She has served on numerous community and municipal boards, including Peekskill Business Improvement District Board member, Community Advisory Board member for the New York Presbyterian Hudson Valley Hospital Center, and Consumer Advisory Board for Westchester County. In 2021, Deb was named one of 914 Inc. Magazine's top women in business. Pretty good. Pretty good, Deb. I'm glad we really get some good guests on here, huh? Just say. Absolutely. Deb is a graduate of New York Institute of Technology, which is why she's here today, because she's all tech. Maybe not. But either way, she's lived in Peekskill with her husband, John, for the last 32 years. We're very happy to have her here. Please welcome Deborah Malone. Hi, guys. Hello there. Let's go, Rangers. Woo! <laughs> Deb, you said the magic words. You're officially, I'm a fan of you now. Uh, also, we did get a very early comment from the peanut gallery out uh, in the virtual world. And I think it's wrong because he says, you like the Yankees, but I see a Mets logo behind I'm you. A, I'm, a, I'm a Mets fan. Oh, my gosh. I'm a Mets fan. I'm <laughs> You're saying all the right things right now, Deb. I'm a big fan. There we go. And a Jet fan. I don't have a I don't have a horse in that race. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we have different horses on this side, but either way, we're very happy to have you here. Thank and, you for having and me. And knowing guys. that you had a Rangers victory, I mean, if that makes everybody feel good locally, it does. I'm okay with that. I'm well, okay I used with to that. I used to go to Rangers games all the time when I worked for CBS and. Um, Back in the day with Ron Duguay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when his hair was flowing over the ice because he didn't have to wear the helmet. Oh, back so. in the good old days. That's right. <laughs> like riding a motorcycle back then. <laughs> but speaking of which, I noticed a number of people yesterday in the Bronx riding mopeds without helmets. Is that okay to do? I I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do what they were doing no matter what. No. But I mean, I'm just saying, I, I'm like, I don't know. Is that is? Are there rules about this? I, mean, 
I, I would think so. I mean, you have to wear, I don't know, is there rules regarding riding a bicycle without a helmet? I mean, I think, is that mandatory? Pretty sure there are. All right, so. <laughs> I don't know. It's just something I, don't I saw know. yesterday. Uh, people all. say I have a hard head, but, you know, I wouldn't risk trying that out. <laughs> Fair. And that's why you've been elected to all these roles, because you're pretty smart. So, oh, thank you. <laughs> so why don't you tell us a little bit about the Hudson Valley Gateway Chamber of Commerce and, and your role there? Well, um, we are the largest business organization north of 287. We have just under 500 members. Uh, my role as president is um, there's no two days the same. Okay, Chamber wears a lot of hats. People think, people ask me all the time, what's the Chamber of Commerce? And yes, it's a business organization. We provide networking opportunities. We provide referrals. We provide support. But, you know, we also are a regional tourism information center. We have a foundation, um, which uh, we do scholarships and we promote tourism. Um, so we wear so many different hats. There's no two days that are, that are the same here. All right. Well, I'm going to I'm going to start off with a with a nice easy layup here. Deb. Okay. So other than your Mets and Rangers hats, which I assume you have at home, do you have a favorite hat that you wear in this role? Um, hmm, that's a good question. I think my favorite hat is just um, meeting people. OK, um, you know, I've met so many different people over the 12 years I've been here, um, not just businesses, um, but also, um, you know, individuals looking for information, things like that. So it is a, a very diverse, um, you know, population, and I've got to interact with all of them. No, absolutely. Well, relationships obviously are uh, are a key to any good, uh, you know, organization, and obviously a focus for us as well. So, um, you know, certainly, certainly could appreciate that. Yeah. So, and it's it's been it's been it's been lots of fun too. I mean, you know, the Chamber of Commerce office is like a um, the community gathering place. People come in all the time just to chat. Um, I know where all the bodies are buried in this town, so. <laughs> <laughs> I could write a book. <laughs> yeah. Well, and there's, there's certainly a lot of legacy here, too, because I, I, I was perusing the website and I found a, a little piece, a piece of history. So what does look like this once looked something more like this, right? Yeah. Well, actually, we actually have another picture, too, of, on the, um, the right side of this photo. That's the front. Um, there is a picture from 1910. Um, from, of this building, and it's you know they don't even have street lights. They had a they just had one uh, like bulb hanging in the middle of the street. But what was interesting about that, it was Lawson's Men's Store, and Lawson was actually the very first president of the then Peekskill Chamber of Commerce in 1915. Mm -hmm. And so 107 years later, here we are occupying the yep the same place that uh, he had his men's store in. So it's kind of wow. cool. That is pretty cool. And you're just the right person to know all this history. too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you really are. I, I mean, Ryan was asking me how, uh, you know, how I knew you and how we connected. And I, I couldn't even really tell you when we first met, but it, it was it was a while ago. I mean, I just thought you created the uh, Hudson Valley Gateway Chamber. No, well, <laughs> well, actually, I didn't really create it. Um, I um, <laughs> I was involved in the transition of the Peekskill Cortland Chamber to the Hudson Valley hmm. um, Chamber. So I can fill you in on that a little bit, if you'd like. <laughs> well, well, how, how did you how did you first get involved? I, I guess that's uh, probably a good way to get started. You know what, guys? Um, I, I I'll tell you in a second. If you can just mute me for us one second, okay? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. There we go. Now you're in the hot seat. I'm in the hot seat. So <laughs> let me tell you about my. Listen, right now my hair is like the grass outside. It is just growing and growing. Oh my God. Really? I, well, I, I, this is filler, right? I, I needed to fill. Oh, jeez. I mean, look at this thing. It's like a giant cloth right now. Well, look, we can always go back to the peanut gallery. Mike, I could give you a hundred reasons why my team deserves to win a cup. And I will list them starting with number one. Number one. I don't think this is appropriate. All right, fine. Oh, wait, I mean, hold now. on. I think, I think Deb's trying to come back. Okay. I'm, I'm so sorry. I had That's okay. Somebody calling me four times in a row, and I kept saying, "Call you later, call you later," and they kept calling back. So I. <laughs> well, I, hopefully, no emergency. It wasn't an emergency. Cool. So. That's not that even. Person it was. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure it was. I, I would say that's that's so, not even close to the uh, biggest curveball somebody's thrown at us on this show. So I, rest I assured. That. And I was adequately filling the time discussing how my hair is growing a lot right now. Okay. <laughs> Hard hitting stuff. So anyway, so what question you, were you asking me again? Well, uh, just I, how you first got involved in the Hudson Valley Gateway Chamber oh, well, and how, you know. I got involved in this chamber in 1992 or 1993. Um, I was working for Guide Communications at the time, and my publisher had an arrangement with the chamber board, and um, they put me on the board of the chamber. Um, so I was on the board of the chamber um, from, I think it was 93 to 2005. Then I was elected chairman of the board. <laughs> And I was chairman of the board from 2005 to 2007. Um, then I kind of took a step back because the company I was working for was sold. And I had to like kind of transition my sales team over to the new company. Um, and when um, the job opened here, uh, I I went for it. I, it was a quality of life decision at that point because I always loved chambers. And, and even as a manager of salespeople, I encouraged them to get involved with their local chamber of commerce, but not just join. Um, but, you know, actually part, actively participate, get involved with, um, you know, committees and things like that, because people do business with people they know. Right. And you have to build relationships. And I did, that's a really key thing for Chambers of Commerce is the networking opportunities that it can present to its members. Um, and I always tell people, if you think by joining the chamber, suddenly you're, the door is going to be bursting open with new customers. Not, no, no, it's not going to happen. It's, it's, you know, you have to put the time in too. What do you expect in return? You know, you want to set the expectations. Um, you know, we're not a lobby group. Okay. This chamber is not a lobby group. Um, I think the U S chamber is, we do not belong to the U S chamber, but, um, we are local, you know, we are a, a regional chamber of commerce serving our business community in this area. Oh, it's wonderful. And, and you know, to your point about uh, uh, not not being necessarily a floodgates of, of new business. I mean, obviously, that, that's our mentality, too. We do a lot of networking as, a, as an organization. But the idea is not is not to go out and, you know, shake 16 hands and come away with four deals. That's not really how that goes. It's more, you know, you cultivate a, you know, a relationship and a place in that community. And that was actually something I wanted to ask you about. Um, you know, as far as the role of business in a community, um, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Is, is there something that drew you to that kind of central place uh, in, in the business community? Is there, is there something uh, beyond just the role and the hats that you wear that, that drew you to it? I I always believed in chambers of commerce, even years ago, you know, when I would go, um, uh, go traveling, you know, I know we were going, I was going out to Montauk at one point and I had no idea where to stay. So I went to the chamber of commerce website. Okay. And I found a hotel as a member there. So I always knew that the chambers were good, um, you know, were, you know, provided good opportunities as far as, you know, uh, these were good business people. Okay. They were committed to their community. They gave back, they were active. And um, so I always went to chambers of commerce for information if I was going to a new city or, 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 or a state. Hmm. Well, that's an interesting point. I had, I actually had not thought of it that way before, right? Coming from a consumer perspective, you're looking for organizations that you can trust, that are reputable, that you know somebody has clearly vouched for them, right? Yes. Uh, so and that, these are people yeah. who are involved too. These right. are people who actually take an active role in in their business community. And I and I am a strong believer also that you, you you to have a good community overall, you need a good business community. OK, because the business community will will drive consumers. So you need services. And and, um, you know, it's, you know, what's different between us and maybe the Business Council of Westchester, which is a great organization. Uh, but we don't have the corporates as many corporates in our a membership. I mean, we do have some corporates or we have um, Sun Chemical and D. Bertolini, um, Holtec. Uh, certainty, but you know we don't have like a miracle mile of of corporate headquarters. So a lot of our businesses are mom and pops, 
and they're small businesses under 10 employees. And these are the people who really, really work day in and day out to keep, you know, keep their doors open. Um, and um, I felt such great pride in doing what I could to assist them. Okay. Even if it's the free promotion I give them, uh, my background is marketing. So, um, you know, I'm one of the few chambers who actually give their members free advertising um, in our weekly e-blasts and, um, you know, you know, social media posts and things like that. So it's, it's very important for me that I market the members as, as best as I can. Well, I, I've certainly gotten that impression from you over many years that you're actively trying to promote others and connect others. And, and that, that's always been very impressive. Um, now, and you were just talking about your membership and the average group being a, a mom and pop and under 10 employees. Maybe, maybe tell us a little bit more about the membership. Like, is it all a very specific area or is it a little further out? I mean, is it just Peekskill or... I guess no, I'm just no, trying to get a sense of the membership and who makes it up. It's definitely not just Peekskill, okay? okay. Uh, the majority of our members, I would say, you know, 90% of our members are local or regional businesses. But we have members from all over the country. I mean, I have, I just had a member join from San Jose. Um, because people join chambers in areas that they want to network themselves in. And I've always encouraged my members also to um, join other chambers of commerce because, you know, there's a York Town Chamber of Commerce and, you know, consumers have no boundaries. They don't say, mm -hmm. oh, this is where we stop because now we're going to York Town. I know if I have to go into York Town for something as a consumer, I go. So if you want to do business in another area, join that chamber of commerce and network yourself there. Oh, it's a good point. It's a good point. Again, another thing that I probably hadn't considered before is, is you know, just why these groups are, are, you know, joining these types of organizations and what they get out of it. So, but what, what do they have to put into it? Like in your eyes to be a good member, right? Like what, what, what's that meet me here, right? Is there, is there a minimum buy-in? They have to pay their dues. Okay. That was a pretty easy <laughs> so, one, I guess. Besides that, you know, a lot of times, you know, a member will join and we have an ambassador program that will send, you know, ambassador out and tell them what, but then they don't get involved. They don't, they don't send me anything. They, they don't show to come to any meetings and they say, oh, the chamber didn't work for me. Well, what did you do? And, you know, our, the website that we have, we track everything that members participate in because it all goes through our website and I can show them you've done nothing. Okay. It's not for me to do the, their job for them. Um, I can help them. Okay. Um, and, and I want to help promote them, but they have to give me something to promote and ask for the help. And um, so it's, it's really, you know, my years of sales, when I was in sales, I was, dealing with small businesses. And I found that the majority of small businesses don't understand marketing. Okay. They look at it as an expense and not as an investment. And um, I, years ago, I remember going into this store in Montrose um, to talk to them about advertising. And um, she re literally closed the door on my foot and said, we can't advertise, we just opened. She was closed six months later. Mm. You, you know, it's, it's so I think, you know, part of when I took this job, I also wanted to educate businesses about the importance of um, marketing themselves. And with the, when, in my role here at the Chamber, as I told you before, I was able to give them free advertising. So, um, you know, right there, you're saving money. So send me something, send me something to promote. I have members who send me things every single week who are very active. And if it doesn't show up in the e-blast, I hear about it. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, then I have other members who complain that their business is bad, but they haven't done anything. They haven't done anything. I, 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 I feel bad. I want to help them, but I don't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can do what you can do, right? I, I like you can only do what you can do. So I think yeah. it's part of the education process of a small business um, because you may know everything. And because advertising is so much a part of our everyday life, we see it. We're constantly barraged by ads. Even if you stream, you're getting ads um, that people think they know about advertising. 
but if you open up a pizzeria, you may know how to make great pizza, but you may not know about marketing. So, you know, right. it's, right. it's, it's, there's things to learn. And I was always surprised because we also do uh, like workshops and webinars and live streams as well. Yeah. And trying to, um, and it's always things that like, if I'm trying to do like a financial webinar, I get nobody shows up, <laughs> but, everybody, <laughs> but everybody complains they have no money. <laughs> oh yeah. It's interesting. So now Deb, as far as your, you know, what you bring to the chamber and to your members, obviously you have a marketing and sales background, just as you said, is that, it sounds like that's more or less a, a, a value add that you as a professional can uniquely add. Is that aligned with say how your chamber is say different than another chamber? Is there something that is uniquely different and, and is it driven by the people who are, you know, in the roles that you're serving? Well, I, I have, I, I have 30 years of relationships here. And, and I'm not being conceited when I say this, but people like me, okay, okay, um, and and I like them. So yeah. it's it's there's a there's an automatic comfort level built in, mm -hmm. and a um, and so there's a trust also automatically built in because they've known me for so long, and 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 I think they can sense that my, um, you know, I'm doing this for the right reasons. OK, it's it's it, listen, you don't get rich working for a chamber of commerce by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> OK, but you're doing it for the right reasons, because you believe in small business. You believe in the success of a business community and you like the people that you're dealing with. OK, and, and that comes across. So I think there is a sense there's that that is really um, a, a, a an asset of mine. Well, you, you certainly are a, a big believer, but but I mean, it seems like it's ingrained in you, the community spirit and to be a part of it and to kind of build that local community. I've, I've always done that. In fact, <laughs> I used to sell, I was like in high school, I used to sell all the boosters and stuff like that. And then when I worked for CBS, I used to have, what is it, the, um, the radio society, they used to have a big Christmas um, uh, event um, at one of the hotels. And I was a secretary back then. And I, in order to get to this event, you had to sell raffle tickets. Well, I got there every year. Okay. <laughs> because everybody knew me. I used to go down to every floor and I'd sell my raffle tickets. And, you know, it's, <laughs> so I do, that's what I do. I, I, I'm just a people person. OK, and sometimes I laugh at myself because I can find out somebody's life history on a Walmart line. OK, and not <laughs> because I want to know it's <laughs> it just happens. It just happens. <laughs> well, I, I mean, you, you just you connect with people. It's very natural for you. There's no question about that. We just saw your friend Mike Bennett with the make. He was honored by Make-A-Wish last week and uh exceptional you know of course i heard him at like six o'clock in the morning and then right. i saw him later yeah. on at night but but uh but everybody just they they love working with you and and you know all of the members but is there a consistent type of member i mean or is it all small businesses that deal with consumers directly you mentioned no, the pizza shop i mean what type of businesses are there's, there's no consistent type of membership okay obviously in the region that we have we're in um there is we have a lot of hospitality businesses so we have you know restaurants and hospitality type of businesses but also you you, you see a tendency of um finance and banking industries um, joining the chamber because their job is to really network and, and, and bring in clients. Um, there's not, a, I don't have a lot of retail members, um, but I do, I, I do have some. Um, and then there is another big segment of our uh, membership is nonprofits. And um, we actually have a non, a separate nonprofit committee that actually uh, has monthly events and working with the nonprofits. All the committee events are open to any one of our members, but they're geared towards certain um, topics. And um, I know uh, Bruce Apar will be talking about social media and the importance of social media at one of the upcoming seminars uh, that we're doing for the nonprofit committee. So, I mean, nonprofits is a very big segment. We started an art industry media group 
um, mm -hmm. dealing with, um, we call it AIM members. Uh, we've noticed that there's a lot of these type of art industry, technology businesses um, coming up in, in this area. So we want to have a group to help them network within each other. So we kind of subbed out that as well. Okay. Um, and also um, construction, we have construction, home improvements. Uh, there's a lot of home improvement companies that are out there. So, um, and those are important too, because those are the referrals I get the most of. Do you, can you give me an electrician? Can you refer a plumber? Okay. Um, because it's always when you need it, you don't, you know, all of a sudden you realize you don't have a plumber. And yeah. gone or, are the days of yellow pages. They or call a roofer. The right. And I say all the time too, it's like, we're Google. All right. Yeah. They don't go ahead. I had this guy once, he, this is very funny. I had this guy once call me and he wanted the directions from Stamford, Connecticut to Croton on Hudson. Okay. So we Googled the directions and sent it him and he emailed us back. Thank you very much. Can you give me the reverse directions? <laughs> That's awesome. That's like, a new hat, right? <laughs> I'm like, really? Can you just kind of turn it around, go back to the way you came? <laughs> oh, we we all know that you actually did give them those reverse directions. Ah, so. Maybe I did. I don't, it was years ago, but I can tell you, I was stuck in my head. I'm like, that's odd. Yeah. Wow. Well, you can only do what you can do, and that was something you could do. So. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> Peekskill is an old town, too. Mm. It goes back to uh, pre-revolutionary times. And um, so there's a lot of families who have been here for generations. And sometimes I'll get phone calls um, from people whose uh, family were here, who's looking for an attorney that they their, 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 in, their family member had used years ago. They're looking for documents. So that's kind of cool. I get to be able to do some research um and find out stuff the tourism stuff is so much fun because i i put together an entire tour tour plan for them if they're coming into this area um so that's fun too uh, I, I remember the year we did uh, we the westchester county association had put on a couple of major city tours and and we had done it up there at the uh, you know the art center and it was really cool. It was just kind of fun to see all the different things. And yeah, it is cool. It's just and there's a lot of history you don't know until you go searching it out. There's a lot of history. And I found this out when, when the chamber celebrated its 100th anniversary in 2015. We did this, um, we did this uh, booklet on um, over 100 years of the of the business community. And I, it, I saw Peekskill in an entirely different way before Urban Renewal, where all the old stores were. And there was a huge... A group of um, Jewish merchants in Peekskill, and a lot of the family members are still here. And they reached out to their family members, and they all took ads in the pictures of their what their what their businesses were back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. So it it I see it in an entirely different way now. I said instead of looking at the bank, I say, oh, that was Big Scott. <laughs> Wow, that's pretty cool. I know when I walk along the water a lot, I, uh, you know, I, I read all the placards that are there and Fleischmann's Pier and all that down the side. And it's really interesting. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of history um, in this area. And um, I mean, you can even go to the Van Cortlandt Cemetery. I mean, even going down to Sleepy Hollow, from like Sleepy Hollow up here, um, there's so much uh, revolutionary history. Um, that and then we have the Lincoln Depot because um, the uh, President Lincoln stopped here. The only place he stopped, maybe it was for five minutes, but he stopped in Peekskill hmm. on his way to his inauguration in in 1860. So um, it was. So then they formed the Lincoln Society here in huh. Peekskill. So we Peekskill has the oldest continuing meeting Lincoln Society in the United States. And then they, wow. they, they took the old train station where um, um, uh, Lincoln had stopped and turned it into a museum. So it's such, I mean, it's such a cool place to visit. Um, they have a lot of great exhibits down there. So that's really nice. That's, that's cool too. Absolutely. Now, Deb, actually, you seem like the perfect person to answer a question that I have about Peekskill. 
because I heard a rumor at one point that if you uh, if you can think down by um, uh, the the riverfront, um, there is right where the train tracks go, right. There was that, uh, there's like a liquor store, mm -hmm. and then just off to the side, there's some yellow brick. And I was told by somebody, I don't remember who, that that was the follow the yellow brick road, like, inspiration. Have you ever heard that rumor before? I, oh, I not only heard it, I've lived it. Okay. okay. Um, I, there, Frank, L. Frank Baum um, went to the Peace Corps Military Academy uh, in the, I guess, the 1860s or 1870s. Okay. And he was miserable. Okay. <laughs> and, and that's, that's, that is written. He was miserable. He hated the time here. Uh, and that time Peekskill was paved with Dutch bricks, which were yellow. So, um, it, the rumors started that he was so miserable that he had to fall the yellow brick road down to the river to get back on the boat to go home. Okay. Wow. Now it's disputed. Hmm. I, I, there's other places who claim he got the inspiration from a, a, other yellow bricks. I mean, the Dutch bricks were not uncommon back then. Okay. Right. Um, but you know, we do have that little, and there are yellow bricks down by Dylan's um, store behind his store. There are the yellow bricks. So yeah, he did go here. There are yellow bricks. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we can take our little place in history as well. <laughs> Absolutely. This is very interesting. Ryan, I, I didn't know you were going to have that in you. I have what in me? Well, I mean, Deb, I did tell you he would ask the smart questions, right? Follow the yellow big road. I, <laughs> it's funny because that just it just popped in my head. I said, you know, I, I've never known who to ask this question, you know, and uh, man, I, I have. I mean, uh, I have a yellow brick here in my office, too. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I do. I have a yellow brick. But, you know, it's, in, you know, it's, it's again, this is all part of the history of this area. I don't throw it to right. anybody, Joe. So right. not yet, at least, okay? <laughs> Um, but it's, it's, um, it's part of our history. And then also back yep. up where Torfee Field was. I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but this is where the Jets training camp was. And back, uh, year, uh, I guess when Joe Namath first joined the Jets and he was a big man about town, Joe, apparently from what I heard. I not know. Okay. Hmm. Um, so, um, you can find them at bars all around town. They used to stay, they used, they used to stay at the Peekskill Military Academy before they tore it down. Wow. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Oh. Very cool. Well, um, uh, you do have a, a random comment there, Ryan. I don't know if you, well, I wasn't going to choose that one, but that's okay. We're going to oh, stay with I'm this. I'm sorry. No, no, let's stay with this anyways, because this actually makes, uh, makes a lot of sense. We have a question from Marissa Madonia. How did the pandemic affect your chamber and all the events you host? Have you found a new normal for your events or are you back to business as before? Excellent question. It, it is an excellent question. And it, it greatly affected our chamber um, and, you know, all the businesses. But I think this chamber really uh, shone, shone through during that time because we were the um, central clearinghouse for all the information from the state, from ESD, uh, from SBA. Um, we were the ones getting all the information and disseminating it all out. Yes, it was all virtual at that point, okay? Um, but, you know, I had members contact me if they were having problems with the PPP loans from one of the maybe major banking institutions, and I would have to find a, a local bank who would deal with a non-customer so they can get their PPP. Um, we wow. got PPE equipment, um, and we've also gotten tests and, and, and masks from um, the County of Westchester that we distributed, okay? We worked with um, promoting food distribution sites. Uh, so we were really majorly involved during the pandemic and very, very, very busy. Um, how we changed, um, we're still not completely back to normal yet. Um, people are still a little bit hesitant about in-person, though we have, we do do in-person now. Um, uh, we we didn't do in person in September, but we had to go back to virtual um, when things started all blowing up again. So I think what it taught us was you have to be very flexible. You had just have to deal with it and and just roll with it because you have no control over it. And but it also gave us an opportunity to look at new technologies and um, and how we can utilize them. 
Um, we all now know Zoom. Did we know it three years ago? Except for you guys, you probably did. I didn't even hear about it. That it's Zoom. It's it's what is it? It's Teams. It's um, all of the boardable apps. It's um, the Canva apps. It's all these new apps mm. that you know um, I was introduced to in order to do business. Okay, and um, I think technology has uh, definitely. Uh, helped us over these past few years um and it's here to stay and we'll see what else is going to be more be, there's a new one out called i think it's called loom that you can actually record things in sessions and things like that 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 you can uh that's pretty cool app too but you know my head is exploding with apps so it's <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I'm curious, how, how easy was it for some of your members, though, to adopt some of this technology? They still can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's harder with a mom and pop organization. Yeah, some, yeah. Still, some still can. And um, it's, you know, it's like after all this time, do you have to say you're on mute? Okay. <laughs> still, yes. I, I still get caught everywhere. I'm supposed to be the technology guy, and I get I get caught on mute all the time. But I, I think people are more comfortable with it now. Yeah. Um, you know, everybody says I'm tired of Zoom meetings, but yet they didn't want to go to in-person meetings. So if, you know, having virtual networking was very difficult. We tried mm -hmm. it a couple of times, and, you know, it's, you know, it was it was very difficult. You know, we didn't get the the response we wanted or the people we wanted to be on in there networking. So we kind right. of put that aside. We sort of focused on more topic oriented sessions that we can bring to our members to, to assist them. Absolutely. Well, and, and in that regard, you know, your, your experience is, um, you know, I'd say somewhat common in terms of the stories that we've heard where, you know, content works well in this format, but it's just tough. You know, again, as, as technology providers, we've seen firsthand groups really try to make the networking work and there's some valiant efforts and some good memorable experiences, but it is really difficult to, to recreate that. Um, you know, it, did you see technology filling a gap in terms of, uh, you know, being able to still continuously connect? I mean, or maybe I should ask, it, was there a technology that, that became the most important for you personally uh, during the pandemic stages? Where some, was something that, I mean, Zoom is probably the, the easy answer. Yeah, but. Zoom. It was, it was really, it was Zoom because it was, it was our, even if I wanted to have a, um, a, a inter-office meeting, not inter-office here in the chamber, but with my board or something, it, I would say, it, it, let me just Zoom you quick. Yeah. You know, because it enabled you to share the screen and go over the documents and things like that so when you weren't doing it in person. So Zoom was really um, a, a great help. Um, but, you know, it was, you know, I, I'm still surprised at some businesses who don't have websites. OK, mm -hmm. um, or, or, or any type of web yeah, presence, tough. even and even a Facebook and even a Facebook page. OK, um, and uh, we work with them and trying to, you know, sometimes it's cost related. OK, and I get that. Um, but there are other ways that you can create a small template or something like that and get yourself some some presence out there. Um, when right. I worked for um, the publishing company, uh, the, the corporation, I was I was lucky because they gave me a SEO training and, um, you know, in, you know, web, web based training. So I, you know, I, I kind of understood the basics of SEO and, and what you need. Okay. Um, and just by putting a page up on the internet doesn't mean you're going to be found. All right. So a lot of it has to do with keywords. So it's, it's, to me, it's always a education process to members because, I could look at their web page on my website and say they don't put any keywords up. So right. they right. have to understand the importance of keywords and why a keyword, you know, will, you know, people are searching, they may put in a word that it will pop up and give them a, a, get that business an option to be chosen as their as as their customer for their customer. Right. Oh, absolutely. You know, and even, you know, like social medias, you know, I, I've seen uh, a lot of groups forego a website altogether and just have a really strong social presence where it's find me on Instagram and you can direct message me there. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And but you have to have, you know, whether or not we like it or not, you know, we well, Joe and I go back this far. Um, 
but you know with you know cassettes and things like that um when ryan i'll make you laugh because when i was working for cbs we were doing we were still doing physical two-inch edits okay yeah. which is non-existent now okay <laughs> so in my lifetime you've seen how much the um technology has changed and it's constantly changing um and you know whether we like it or not we have to keep up with it we don't have to know everything but we have to have an awareness right. of of, of yeah. what works and what doesn't work like my age group we're more on facebook than we are on on you know um link uh, on we don't tweet yeah. Okay, I don't tweet. Okay, <laughs> Joe. Joe doesn't tweet either because he's uh, either. he's a little older than he looks. <laughs> I know with all this hair, Mike D. I yeah, know, right? I know. You can't believe it. But... Uh, we know Twitter. We know all this stuff, but it doesn't mean we have to participate in it. Right. Okay. Right. Um, and it's really how much social, inf how much information you want to get out into the into the general public. I mean, mm -hmm. my posts on Facebook, you find all like little doggies and kittens and things like that um you know i i actually i you know i troll facebook for my members believe it or not because they'll put stuff on facebook which i'll snip off and use in my e-blast because they're not sending it to me right. so i go see is there any promotion any event that they're doing that i need to take and i'll i'll i'll, I'll take that stuff but Oh wow! Well, look, it, it looks like uh, you know you, you've certainly got the command of the uh, the technology side. Obviously, you have a, uh, a tech background, as Joe mentioned earlier. So it, it seems like that that uh, adjustment was fairly natural for you, and and an adjustment it was, as Mike put out. You have to be comfortable staring at the camera and speaking, which not everybody is, as far as the networking goes. And and we have seen uh, you know that not. Uh, uh, not so easy for some people as it is for others, but again, speaks to that comfort with change and comfort with with technology. And look, and and if you have a problem, you can still always reach out to Deb and ask a question about directions, or in this case, uh, what company in Peekskill makes the best English muffins? It's damn good English muffins. <laughs> Is that the name of the company? Yes, it is. Okay, there you go. Damn good English muffins. There you go, Mike. And they're damn good. <laughs> Damn good. There. See, there you go. You just had to go to the right person to get That's the information. Right. That's, That's right. That's right. So, you know, I see things on Facebook and I'll, you know, people will say, can you give me a plumber? And I, you know, I'll just respond and say, go to the Chamber's website. Mm -hmm. You know, you have over 500 businesses here ready to serve you. Right. <laughs> no, that, that's excellent. I mean, but it's all communicating and, like you know, like I said, you you have promoting and community service in your blood. Like it's just, it's so natural for you. But uh, you know, I, I guess as one, some of the things we're hearing right now, like there's a lot of different challenges that that groups are facing during uh, 2022. Right? They're, we're coming out of the pandemic. We're not coming out of the pandemic. Like everybody's got their own little saga going on right now. What do you think are some of the challenges that your members are seeing right now? And I guess, how is Hudson Valley going to be able to, to help them in the future? Well, I think it's really still trying to figure out the the state of the pandemic. I mean, business has not come back a hundred percent yet. OK. Um, and again, because we're so reliable, we're relying here on our hospitality industry. Um, our restaurants are very important to us um, and it's getting people back out. Also, you know, a problem. And I think this is in general for everybody is the cost of living um, and, um, you know, whether it's inflation, what are you going to call it? We're going to a recession. What? But people have less money. So when they have less money, they don't go spending on something that they don't absolutely need. And that'll right. be in a ripple effect as well for our small businesses. You know, maybe you don't go out for dinner. OK. Um, and or, you know, the, so the, these are the things that I see that are the repercussions of what the last two years were that we need now to kind of kind of, you know, navigate our, our way through. Um, and but I'm ha I'm hopeful because, you know, we're going to be having some more festivals in the area. So, you know, I'm, I'm encouraging people to, you know, attend these and some of the local businesses will be out there uh, promoting themselves as well. But it's 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 been a tough it's been a really, really tough couple of years. And um, 
I, I can't, you know, I'm hoping 2023 will be better. 2022 was better than 21 and 21 was definitely better than 20. So, <laughs> um, you and know, the right we direction. are, um, you know, we're heading in the right direction, but it's not going to change overnight and, um, it's going to be a slow rebuild. And one good thing that, that Peekskill has and our surrounding communities is development. And um, there's a lot of new uh, residential development going up. Right. And when there's residential development going up, there's going to be a need for additional businesses and services. So hopefully that will spur on more economic you know, activity here in the area as well. Well, no, that, that's, I mean, all these things, um, you know, we've seen firsthand being a member of the, the bigger community. And, and of course, my wife has a hair salon in Peekskill. And so she saw people come in less, you know, that was how they stretched their money out. They, they wouldn't get uh, their hair cut or done as often. So they stretch right. it out a little bit longer. So they all look like this. That's why, you know, of course, yeah, I look so like she, this. She, yeah. My brother has a hair but, salon too in Hartsdale. My brother has. <laughs> oh, yeah. But uh, but now, you know, like the challenges that she's seeing, and I know we see it certainly in our part of the hospitality world, is uh, is staffing, is mm. just trying to find qualified people. And and I am sure that the restaurants and groups in the, in the area are having struggles. It's, with that. it's it's really it's really tough. And, and you can and you you can see you can see it, too, because people complain that the service is not good, but they don't have the staff. OK. Um, and, you know, people have turned, you know, events we've had turned away because they don't have the staff or they don't want to bring in a staff for the morning if they need the staff for the later afternoon and evening. So it's it's staffing is is has been very difficult. And um, you, you see help wanted signs all over the place. And even um, my husband and I drove down to Florida in January and you see the same signs down there, okay? So it's not just here, it's it's staffing overall. And if people want higher wages, um, that means the higher prices. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's like a vicious circle. <laughs> it's a little bit of a challenge for right now as we're working, we're all working through these things. But, uh, but I, I think it's amazing. You've done a great job at the Hudson Valley Gateway and the way you're always promoting everyone and and just so involved in the community and it is an, it's a special community and and they need a leader you know and you've been a great leader thank you so much it's it, 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 it's been my honor it really has been my honor to serve this business community over the last 12 years I'm, I'm very proud of what I've accomplished and very and I'm very grateful for the people I've met and the friends I and I gained so well, I, I know who to call now for directions and or muffins referrals. <laughs> and I mean, I got your number, so yeah, <laughs> I don't know where to find call. me. <laughs> but, you know uh, how to find me. I'm no senior stranger, Joe. <laughs> no, no, you're you're definitely not. Listen, we appreciate all your time today, Deb. I you're, I expect you're going to get four more phone calls in the next like five minutes. So, but uh, but thank you very much for yes. your time today and thank for all you. that you've done in the community. Thank you so much, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Ryan, Joe. Rangers, okay? Woo! Tomorrow Woo! night, be there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Deb. Thank you, guys. Thank Have you. Take day. care. Bye. Bye now. She, she is a people person. I don't think there's any question. Absolutely. And, you know, like we like to say, we like Deb. Everybody likes Deb, you know? We do. We do. Oh, sorry. I cut you off there. Yeah. That's okay. But Mike has a nice point as well. Great leader and inspiration to us all. I agree. That is a, a point well taken. And, uh, you know, I, hopefully everybody got something out of today's today's discussion, you know, mm -hmm. and I think one of the key points and this this comes up, you know, is to have success in a chamber of commerce or, or a group similar. You know, you got to put in the effort. You can't just show up. And, you know, like she said, there's not just going to be you know, a whole bunch of people knocking at your door like it doesn't work like that. Right. You have to get involved. You get what you give. You get what you get. It's like many areas of life, right? It's no shortcut, no instant payoff, but it is a, a worthy cause and a, and a worthwhile investment, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I think it's, uh, 
I, I wanted to see if there was any random comments here. I don't see any other random comments. You never know. We get some strange ones out there. If we do, indeed. Yeah, you know, so you just never know. But either way, Ryan, it's time for us to wrap it up. Let everybody know how they can find us. Okay, you can find us on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on YouTube Live. Sorry. Oh, God, you're blowing it. I, oh, I was man. locked up in another window. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll try to do it slower. Wednesdays, 1 p.m., right? Live. There we go. Uh, and while you're there, you can drop us a comment, be part of a show, be like Mike Dardano, right? Drop us some comments, get some questions in there. Oh, I think I, I say do it. Like, you, want, you want people to be like Mike Dardano? I, there's some comments I could pull in right now. I'm not going to do it. I'm not that's gonna do what it. I'm saying. I don't think we can. <laughs> I, look, I, I suggest everyone be a little bit more like Mike Dardano. Okay. All right. Let's anyway, uh, you can find us on uh, those channels, like we said. And then where was I? Also, smash the subscribe button. Uh, also, f- Instagram, Bite Size Pieces. Man, I'm just this you are off the rails. Opinion. Off I the mean, rails. Okay. Wow. You know the deal. Watch the beginning. You'll see it all over again. All right, everybody. We're done. We're going to see you next time. Thank you very much. Adios. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao.